Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Prep Huddle Live on strivesports.com. We are just like you are watching the end of the Husker game. So uh, if you have it on DVR, here's your uh, chance to pause us. There we go. And go Big Red. So uh, we've got a very special show tonight. We've got High Plains boys coach Cameron Hudson in studio tonight. We're excited to talk to him uh, coming up in just a little bit. Tony Chapman is in Grand Island. And Tony, I'm, we're, I'm a little edgy. I'm a little shaken because uh, that was a big win for the Huskers right there. But we got a great show that uh, we need to tell the folks about, too. Hold on. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, miles greater than Izzo. Three in a row. Uh, for the Huskers against Michigan State now. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for this show tonight, Eric. It's going to be basketball heavy, but that's fine. We'll kind of get a good preview of the Crossroads Conference Tournament, which is coming up next week uh, in York. As you said, you've got Cameron Hudson over there with you. We'll interview him here in a minute. The Storm survived Heartland last night, 70-67, to 67, got 25 points from Thomas Young. And then later, we'll have Brooding Davenport, Shickley guard, Riley Techmeyer on the show. The Eagles are first. Cameron Storm are second in Class D1. The Eagles last week won the Mudeikis Championship over Freeman. Riley had 21 points in that win. And then we'll run down plenty of ranked games uh, on the Strive 5 and then some uh, headed into next week. And like we said, we are joined in studio now by Cameron Hudson of the High Plains Storm. And, uh, Coach, we want to start, I guess, first of all, last night. That was kind of fun. Uh, you guys hosted <laughs> Heartland. I, at least it was fun to watch uh, from that perspective. Uh, talk just real quick about that game. Uh, Thomas Young didn't start but uh, came back. I know his, uh, he's got that ankle thing going since, since football. Yeah. So uh, kind of how is he going? And obviously, boy, he was a, a huge spark off the bench last night. Well, that was a tale of two halves. I thought, you know, first half we – Played really well, really efficient, uh, really got after after Heartland. Um, but Coach Ribble, they, they made some adjustments, and they, they gained a little confidence. And, uh, you know, it was a deal where we needed every second of that game because uh, it, it was down to the wire, which which we need as a team too. Um, you know, Thomas, that was the first he'd played for us in a month. And so it was kind of a deal where we had – Kind of held him out a little bit and just made sure he was ready to go. But uh, our other guys had stepped up. I mean, just incredible. I, you know, just the the uh, the uh, roles that everybody's taken on. But uh, he he did a lot of nice things for us last night, and we're definitely glad to have him back. Uh, at eleven and one, and like you said, uh, a step up in competition there. Uh, how important was that to uh, for you guys to kind of be in there and be in the heat of the moment that hasn't happened a lot this year no and it's so important for down the road whatever you know however your season ends up you have to play those games and I told the guys at practice today that it's going to be that way more times now than not in terms of just the intensity and the uh, the fact that uh, you know you're gonna you're gonna rally but teams are gonna also rally back and and so we have to be able to um just maintain intensity, I think, is the biggest thing. Coach, you've got four guys who are averaging 10 or more points. Uh, Sam Johnson leads you on the season, all total at 19 a game. Um, it, it seems like uh, it, when if Thomas can get uh, as close as he's going to get to 100%, you guys have the potential to have anybody on any given night really step up with big. And that's got to be important, uh, you know, scouting-wise. You can't just say, well, yeah, it's all Thomas or it's all Sam. It, it's really getting pretty pretty well spread around. Yeah, and I, it's like you were at practice today because we had the exact same talk. And it's just that we, if we can maintain consistency with everybody, the, it allows us to be guarded at all five spots. And therefore, there aren't really a lot of times when you're going to face a double or maybe a mismatch in terms of, um, you know, somebody not being guarded. And uh, plus it, it really just makes the game flow a lot more when you have five different guys at any time that can go create and make things happen. And, and it's fun, too. I mean, it's just fun to see them share the ball and, and uh, you know, just play. Uh, coming off the heels of a, of a state title from a year ago, what's the difference – the biggest difference so far that you've seen, maybe I don't know if it's chemistry wise or uh, you know mental makeup, if you will, uh, between last year and this year that you've noticed. Last year's team was very determined in that they had been in the finals the year before, and so that was just the rallying cry all year was getting back to Pinnacle Bank Arena and finishing it. Um, this year's group now just um, they kind of have been a group of kids that have really worked hard in practice and they've had to wait their turn. And for some of these guys, that's been a three-year wait. And so they just really want to take advantage of the opportunity this year and leave their mark as well. So um, I think this group really understands, though, 
what crunch time means. I mean, they've either been in games or, um, you know, been at big games for a lot of years now. And so, you know, they don't get rattled. I mean, some of the timeouts, like last night, there was one timeout where it, it, I didn't do a lot other than they kind of sorted out a couple things and, and, and then some good things happened right after that. So that's pretty encouraging. Uh, Tony, uh, we've got the next set of questions on the list, and I feel like you would be more apt to uh, to talk about the the CRC tournament and uh, and maybe kind of what it means. Uh, so I'll let you let you kind of take it from here. Well, Cam, you and I probably have beat this horse uh, to death in the in the past few years, but you know if you could just speak maybe a little bit to uh, wh- how, what it's like to play in the in the Crossroads Conference tournament, what it's like to coach in the Crossroads Conference tournament, and then I guess more importantly. Uh, what it means or the experience you draw on in February and March after you played in it? Well, it's one of the, I mean, as far as a conference tournament, it is just dynamic in that you get an entire conference to one site for an entire week, and then you're able to um, have the quality of competition there. And, uh, you know, the the uh, just walking into the auditorium and, you know, from, from my perspective of even just, just getting to the locker rooms and there's one locker room on top of the other one. And, you know, both teams kind of come out the same entrance and stuff like that is pretty cool. But, uh, it's, um, you have to play well, obviously to even advance to the semifinals in the Crossroads conference tournament. And our, our biggest thing we've always told our group is get the first win. Then, you know, you're there the rest of the week. And then you kind of just got to go to work at that point. Um, Friday night, is awesome there it always has been it probably you know i I, it always will be to me um uh it's whether you're sitting up clear up in the top watching or you're uh down on the bench it's it's just a pretty cool atmosphere and you know i always try and take a minute and you know just kind of check things out and usually the same people are sitting in the same seats and you kind of (laughs) just wave at them and stuff like that too uh i guess to guess to uh talk about how the communities kind of gather. I mean, you, you just maybe spoke to it a little bit, but you literally do. You'll have whole communities, and they kind of each have their own little spot in the gym, it seems like. is uh, I suppose that's another thing that, that really kind of makes it unique, don't you think? It's interesting when you have two schools that want to sit on the same side of the auditorium and how they're <laughs> going to sort that out. Um, you know, you have the High Plains fans have always – Polk Cordville fans have always sat on one side that I can remember, and then, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I, in your – I guess with Hampton, I mean, the Hampton's always sat on the side and it's just, um, it, it's really, um, when you, you know, you know what teams are playing, you kind of already have everything sorted out as to how it's all going to look when you get there. Cause it's the same every year. So we can, we could throw out any, uh, seating arrangement that the auditorium actually wants to put out. Nah, yeah, there it's isn't just, one. it's yeah. just, it's just going They put a sign up when you come in, but I think they're just catering. They already know where everybody's going to sit. <laughs> so they don't, they don't change it up. They direct you where you're going to go sit anyway. Yep. Um, so talk about the the week uh, it, from a uh, purely now from the game perspective because you got to get guys and, and girls uh, in the same regards ready to play basically three straight nights yeah. of uh, top quality uh, all you got basketball and you really don't do that again until March. Yeah, and that's when when the seeding came out and this year it's a little different the with just adding a team in the conference and so like there's there are some Wednesday games and that's that's new this year and 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 so we're going to have one of those Wednesday games but you know I said all right guys I mean it's Wednesday it's Thursday it be Friday and just like March you know and they're like okay we we've, we've done that you know a couple times and so that that was just just in passing I mean at, at that point we've got other things to worry about but but that was just one short conversation we had but uh you have to be ready to play though I mean it's um there are every year there's a team that that plays really well that surprises that maybe you know people didn't necessarily say was going to be one of the the finalists or the top four teams and you know it's 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 about that time of year when you really start looking towards the end of the year too and you want to be playing your best basketball Uh, I I want to ask something and and I'm sure Tony would love to speak about this too Um, is there something about the week that you try to teach the guys beforehand so that maybe they appreciate the the atmosphere a little bit more or do you wait until after they've played their last time through the tournament and you go guys that is as good as it's going to get well tony i think on my end it was um i'd always told the guys one of the memories i have or and i've i've heard about is going to chances are after you win the championship it doesn't mm-hmm. matter what time it is you just call down there and say we want it we're coming in and you know i was 
we had tried for a lot of years. We, we got it done finally last year. And so that was one thing that those guys that were, that were like, all right, you know, we're going <laughs> type thing. No, we never did that. I guess maybe it was a little more commonplace for us to win them, so it yeah. wasn't as big a deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, oh, geez. you know what, though? Well, okay. <laughs> I don't even know where to go from that. Uh, I don't have a mic. Tony does, or yeah, Taylor doesn't have a mic, but. What's it like being principal and head basketball boys coach? Do your players look at you differently during the day of practice, or what's, what's that like? Yeah, yeah, real quick, uh, so so everyone can actually hear it. Taylor wants to know, um, since Cameron is also principal at the high school, do the players have a different interaction with you as Principal Hudson versus Coach Hudson throughout the day? Yeah, one of the easiest things is, I mean, you're like, you better do the things you need yeah. to do because practice is coming. I mean, that's, that's a <laughs> simple one. But, um, you know, I don't spend a lot of time with basketball during the day, and that's just part of the, the – um, the role as the administrator. Um, but then at the same time, the, uh, you know, our, our, we've got a great group of kids that are, I think they're pretty serious about academics as well. And so, you know, it, it's, I just love helping the kids in general and whether it's with college planning, whether it's with, you know, just, just getting them in the right classes, making sure that they're, they're doing what they need to do. Um, but, uh, you know, it always, at the end of the day, you're like, all right, remember second period when you were whatever. I mean, that's, I told you, and it was going to be this way. Yeah. So, so yeah, just a little, yeah. It, it's yeah. It, it's the the kids are great though. I mean, they they realize though too. I'm I'm doing a lot of other stuff too, and so um, you know they take it upon themselves a lot. A lot of the uh, coordination things in terms of just travel stuff and getting kids lined up as far as what we're wearing and you know those things. The kids kids are great. They know I don't. I want I want those guys to kind of take on some of those leadership roles too. And it, and it kind of gives them a little more ownership in the yeah. program, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And we, I screwed it up one day. I said, uh, we're wearing polos and jeans and they looked at me uh, cause they had already arranged shirts and ties, you know, and they were <laughs> like, you know, don't step on what you told us we had, we could do. Yeah. Well that and we live and learn. Right? Yeah, we that's, do. That's all a part of it. Absolutely. Uh, Tony, do you have anything else there in Grand Island? I don't, it should be noted though. Cam, Cam's uh, team did beat us his freshman year, so uh, he might have got his chances our meal early uh, in his high school <laughs> career. So I will let that out. Cam, the only last thing I would ask you is we're kind of going long, but this is fun. Is you know your your schedule is kind of back heavy. Are you hoping that that this tournament can prepare you for you know Osceola Cross County BDS still to come after the Crossroads Conference tournament? Are you hoping maybe it prepares you for that stretch a little bit too? Yeah, and it's um, the next three weeks are just just loaded up like you said and that's what we uh, look forward to I, I think it's exciting I think our kids are excited about it and um, you know we've uh, worked hard up to this point and so now we're you know we're ready to, to make a push here towards the towards the last uh, you know third of the season for sure should be a lot of fun and uh, I can't wait and I know that we've had the post out and but we haven't had a show since we've not had the post out but um, strive sports is going to have the play-by-play coverage the live stream of at least the championship games and i'm pretty sure all of the third place games as well on the friday of crc so yep, that's awesome so the uh, as cool as as the atmosphere will be we will do our best to try to capture the moment and uh and kind of no, bring that out for everyone that's, that's awesome that is that is great because the uh the exposure for the conference is you know really cool and people read about or hear about the, the Crossroads Conference Tournament, and this is just one more way to just kind of, you know, showcase that. So it's, it's really cool. So Tony's going to be studying his uh, CRC history very much this week, right? It's it's pretty much all stuck back in that little portion of my brain <laughs> that I always, uh, I don't know, it just stays in there for some reason, Eric. All right, well, we'll go with that. That's Cameron Hudson, High Plains head coach. Coach, thanks a lot for taking some time out right. and uh, and making the trip. So we'll yeah. we'll uh, I'm gonna hit Arby's on the way home. So well, we're good. <laughs> not chances are tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> not tonight. We'll save that for maybe for next week, folks. We got to take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna talk with Riley Tegmeyer of BDS uh, Prep Huddle Live. Is brought to you in part though by Dickie's Barbecue in York. When you can get pulled pork sliders for just one dollar, there they are, the mountain of sliders at Dickie's Barbecue in York with delicious sides and ice cream to go with it. I've got great catering ideas as well. We'll be back to Prep Huddle Live on strivesports.com. 
home-cooked favorites, and online ordering so you can skip the line. That's what you'll find at Dickie's Barbecue in York. Log on to Dickies.com, select the York address, sign in or create a profile, and you'll be ordering delicious barbecue in just seconds. Choose from a variety of meats like brisket, pulled pork, chicken breast, or sausage. Add a homestyle side like waffle iron fries, fried onion tanglers, barbecue beans, and even fried okra. You won't go away hungry. Try Dickie's Barbecue today and log on to Dickie's.com. Kids eat free on Sundays. Yeah, I get it. For the little things. Technology's great. It makes things easier. It's faster. We can get things done wherever we go. And we get all that from our bank. It works for us. But for the bigger things, the things that really count, I still want to talk to the people I know and trust. That's why I'm here. I love it. It's fun. It's a fun industry to be in. Meet lots of different people, do lots of different stuff. There's always something new happening, so. So far, I've been enjoying it since I've been here. It's been great, learning new stuff every day. I recommend anyone come in and work here because so far, the working environment's friendly, everyone's kind, and also the new guys that come here, they will gain the confidence that they need just to come and work. I like how everybody around here is, you know, we all kind of become real good friends. It's like a second family here. It's not something you'd come to just work for a month or two. It's something you'll want to stick with forever. Seedsmanship is what truly sets Channel Seed apart from other seed brands. It's our unmatched ability to provide you with the expert advice and customized service that helps you get the most yield out of your acres. It's the added value of year-round service combined with elite seed products that you only get from Channel Seed. At Channel, we know the importance of staying connected. As seed experts, we look to get the most out of your fields by putting ourselves in them throughout the season. That's Seedsmanship at work. Welcome back to Prep Auto Live here on Strivesports.com. We are joined now on the Truck Center Company's hotline by BDS Senior Eagle, Riley Tegmeyer. Riley, thanks for joining us here tonight. Uh, first of all, it's, uh, it's been a dream senior year for you, it's got to be. Uh, tell us about this season. First of all, of course, winning state in football, and now you've got this uh, wonderful start going in basketball. It's, uh, it's a charmed life so far for you guys. I mean, yeah, it is, definitely. I mean, it was a dream come true to win it in football. I mean, great memories from that, but at the same time, we recognize that nothing we did in football translates over to basketball here. So, I mean, we have big goals for basketball, too, and it has been a great start. I mean, we put a lot of wins in the win column so far, but it all matters what we do at the end of the year. So hopefully we can keep it rolling. Riley, you guys got have extra Milligan Friday night, and that's kind of turned into a nice little county rivalry. But, you know, last year they pulled the football-basketball double. Uh, is that something that, that you and your buddies talked about uh, in the offseason, seeing them do it? Did that motivate you guys to maybe work a little bit harder in, in, in both sports in the offseason? I mean, definitely. I guess we look at it, too, as the last – our whole high school career we've been – I mean, extremely close to winning championships. We've been right up there at the top every year. And so I think we just wanted to get one first off. And, you know, we did that. We did that in football. But once you do that, you kind of shift your focus to basketball then. And, I mean, you have all the same goals there too. So, I mean, yeah, and Exeter Friday, I mean, I don't know even what their record is, but you can't look at the win column on that because you know that we're going to get their best shot and they're a dang good team too. So we got to come ready to play. Otherwise, we're going to get beat. Riley, can you can you speak to you speak to you? You've had you've had obviously uh, brothers grow up and and you've watched them play in York. But I guess first off, what's it like to 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 see your family succeed before you and then kind of carry that on uh, as far as 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 the sports thing goes? I mean, yeah, I gotta gotta watch Ryan. He won a lot of games. He was obviously a really good player, and you know, watching him win it his sophomore year. And then luckily I was a part of the team that won it his senior year. I mean, those are great memories. Uh, York Auditorium is a great place to play. There's always great crowds. It's a great atmosphere. And so to be able to go in there to win some games, uh, it's a great feeling. And hopefully we can win some more this year and get back and another chance to win a conference title. 
What, what do you guys take from that even after the conference tournament? What do you take from that as you guys head into, you know, those last four or five games of the regular season into the postseason? How much does playing there in that atmosphere help for the rest of the year? I mean, it's, it gets about as loud in that building as you're going to get the rest of the year. It's just, you know, a close environment. Like I said, the atmosphere is great and the conference is really good too. So it's great competition and it prepares us really for the end of the year. I mean, Every year you look at the standings to end it, and there's always CRC teams up there. So to be able to play that competition and conference, it really does translate into the end of the year. Riley, uh, I, it seems like we're just asking you about the future, but uh, there, we might not get too many more of these chances, so we got to talk to you while we can. Uh, in a few weeks, you guys are going to play Amherst in the Heartland Hoops Classic in Grand Island. Uh, last year you played St. Cecilia in that event. Uh, obviously, so that, that's uh, going to be some really quality teams and another big-time atmosphere, uh, hopefully. So how does playing in that type of, of an event uh, maybe translate to that postseason and, and give you that uh, big-time feel uh, at other times throughout the year? I mean, it's it really helpful. St. Cecilia, they really took it to us last year. And, you know, in some ways, maybe that's something we needed because they showed us where a lot of our flaws were and, you know, there were things we worked on, and we were able to be playing our best basketball towards the end of the year. When you look at Amherst, they're undefeated. They're ahead of St. Cecilia in the ratings. They're going to be another really good team. So I guess we just got to focus on the game us, up ahead of us, and uh, when we get there, we're going to have to play really good basketball. But win or lose that game, it's going to show us things that are going to help us for the rest of the year. Riley, I got one more uh, to ask, and I told Taylor and Tony I wasn't going to, but in the spirit of, of just having fun with this, um, it's become a little trend that we need to ask uh, the athletes, uh, especially the basketball ones that come on the show, uh, if you've challenged Coach to a shooting contest yet. Uh, and your coach, Fred Cluck, has been around for a long, long time. So uh, I, I, I'm curious. All the, the other coaches that we've asked about have been uh, a little younger generation. So uh, have, you, uh, have you spoken up for Coach yet? No, but in all honesty, Coach always challenges us to shooting contests. He thinks, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He, he was around a long time ago, so he claims he was a pretty good basketball player. And he always tells us it's not that hard, and then he usually proceeds to miss it. So, I mean, it's kind of funny. Well, take it easy on him. Uh, he's uh, he's kind of an institution <laughs> yeah. down there for you guys. Uh, this is Riley Tegmeyer, senior for the BDS Eagles. Uh, Riley, great year so far. We look forward to hearing more from you throughout the rest of the year. Thank you, guys. All right, Tony, we're going to take another uh, real short commercial break. And when we come back, Tony and I are going to talk a little bit more in-depth about the brackets for both the CRC and the Central 10 Conference. That's coming up on Prep Huddle Live on strivesports.com. I never really imagined that I would be a diesel technician. I started out in a whole different other field and then kind of worked my way and stumbled my way into it. And I enjoy every day of it. The people that I work with are great. Even if you're having a bad day, you know, they find some way to try to make you laugh or smile to try to brighten your day up. It can be a life-changing opportunity. So there's a lot of good uh, things that this company has to offer. Seedsmanship is what truly sets Channel Seed apart from other seed brands. It's our unmatched ability to provide you with the expert advice and customized service that helps you get the most yield out of your acres. It's the added value of year-round service combined with elite seed products that you only get from Channel Seed. At Channel, we know the importance of staying connected. As seed experts, we look to get the most out of your fields by putting ourselves in them throughout the season. That's Seedsmanship at work. Yeah, I get it. For the little things. Technology's great. It makes things easier. It's faster. We can get things done wherever we go. And we get all that from our bank. It works for us. But for the bigger things, the things that really count, I still want to talk to the people I know and trust. That's why I'm here. Home-cooked favorites and online ordering so you can skip the line. That's what you'll find at Dickie's Barbecue in York. Log on to dickies.com, select the York address, sign in or create a profile, and you'll be ordering delicious barbecue in just seconds. Choose from a variety of meats like brisket, pulled pork, chicken breast, or sausage. Add a homestyle side like waffle iron fries, fried onion tanglers, 
barbecue beans, and even fried okra. You won't go away hungry. Try Dickie's Barbecue today and log on to Dickie's.com. Kids eat free on Sundays. Yes. Q's going now. Yes. All right. Here we go. Back for Prep Huddle Live on Strivesports.com. I'm Eric Olga. Tony Chapman's in Grand Island. Tony, we want to talk brackets. Uh, we will live in Bracketville for the next, uh, well, about four months now, right? Uh, so yeah. uh, here we go. CRC basketball is what we want to talk about first. Of course, it's been the uh, focal point, it seems, of course, for our show here tonight. But we want to talk CRC girls bracket. And they will get started with a couple games on Saturday. And again, uh, Cameron Hudson alluded to it just a little bit um, that they've uh, got a little different schedule. There's going to be two boys games and two girls games every day between this Saturday and next Friday, with the exception of Sunday. So there are even games on Wednesday. That's something a little new. Uh, but some games on Saturday uh, on that girls bracket. And for those of you that would like to follow along with us, we would invite you to uh, not close out your Prep Auto Live tab, but to open a new tab, go to Strive Sports again, and, and we are on the CRC basketball brackets post. And I'm just reading uh, right off of there. So, uh, Tony, a couple games there with the girls' side. You've got the five-seed Osceola taking on the 12-seed McCool Junction. And then you'll have uh, Dorchester, the sixth seed, taking on the 11th seed in Cross <laughs> and Cross County. And uh, like we said, uh, you, and Coach Hudson alluded to it as well, got to win that first one before you worry about the rest of the week. So uh, especially for those play-in games, if you will, for, if you're not one of the top four seeds, uh, that first round, it's, uh, it's obviously huge for the rest of your week. Yeah, absolutely. Those Saturday-Monday games – get you into the quarterfinals and three ranked teams in the girls bracket uh, with BDS Hampton and extra Milligan. And then we're going to go, Tony's got, Tony's fighting a, a good cough here. So then we'll, okay? I'll flip over to the, uh, to the guys side and the guys games on that Saturday, the 23rd will be the five seed in Osceola taking on Dorchester <laughs> and then Hampton and East Butler will be the seven thirty game uh, there in that first round. Then we will go. We'll take Monday or Sunday off. Then we'll take on games on Monday, uh, and then the CRC boys bracket. You'll have Exeter Milligan taking on McCool Junction. You'll have Shelby Rising City against Meridian, and on the girls' side, you'll have High Plains against East Butler, Shelby Rising City against Gildner. Now I have a cough too. It's like contagious over here. So Tony, insights on some of those games. Well, again, you guys, you got Exeter Milligan. It's eight seed, uh, and they're five and eight. Struggled a little bit, but you never know. And then to maybe play BDS uh, in the quarterfinals would be just a really fun one to watch. And I look out for Osceola maybe uh, as a five seed that could possibly uh, get through. I think they've already beat Giltner, so that might be an interesting matchup there in the quarterfinals. And then one I would really look forward to, uh, if the numbers hold, is a uh, semifinal game uh, with High Plains and Cross County. That would be a, a really fun one on Thursday night if it came to fruition there. 7.30 game Thursday night, and then you'd have uh, BDS and, uh, or if it, again, if the uh, seeds would hold, it'd be BDS and Giltner. But like you said, Osceola, who is a five seed and would have to play a game before they get to Giltner, has already beat Giltner once. So uh, I tell you what, if, if you had a final four of BDS, Osceola, High Plains, and Cross County, that there's a reason that uh, the CRC tournament is so good year in and year out. It's because of quality competition like that, and and of those four, then you'd you'd uh, you'd take any one to uh, to go on to great things. You would think in the postseason. On the girls' side, you've got BDS as the one seed there as well. Exeter Milligan is the two seed. Hampton the three seed, and Meridian the four seed. And uh, Tony, at least from from my untrained eye or slightly trained eye, that also is a really stacked, uh, especially there at the top with those four, uh, really stacked girls bracket as well. Yeah, Hampton and Exeter Milligan, you'd have there uh, if they were to get to the semifinals. Both of those teams are ranked in in Class D two. Uh, Hampton has a loss to BDS earlier in the year. They have two losses, and then uh, to Heartland a little bit before Christmas. But I think they've rattled off maybe eight or nine in a row. So the Hawks are playing well. They won it last year for the first time since 1990. They're the defending champ. Uh, BDS has played really well uh, all year. They've been ranked in the top ten in D one, and then Exeter Milligan, I believe now uh, is ranked either third or fourth uh, in class D2 so again a loaded field uh, especially there at the top half if if you won either of these tournaments Eric you played really good basketball for three days and uh, you know you could be yeah. one of those uh, you could be one of those first day games 
and uh, and teams and be uh, still be a really good team. Uh, I think we've covered that. So shall we go to the Central Ten Conference, which will be hosted at Northwest High School in Grand Island coming up, uh, and they will start uh, not on Saturday, but they will start on Monday with their games. And uh, again, we're looking. I'm just looking straight off the uh, post on strivesports.com uh, that is elsewhere on your page. Uh, so we've got some Monday games on the girls' side with uh, Fairbury hosting. Grand Island Northwest, and again, those first two rounds, if you will, Monday and Tuesday games are at the higher seed, and then the uh, the semi or the quarterfinals and semifinals and championship games, or no, the final two rounds. I'm sorry, semifinals, championships, all at Northwest uh, in Grand Island. So you've got uh, on the girls' side, Fairbury hosting Northwest. Holdridge hosting Skyler in those first round games. Uh, and then uh, again at the top on that girls' side, you've got York as the one seed. They're coming off a loss to Norris last, or uh, loss to uh, Crete, who, um, no, they're coming off a loss to Norris. Norris beat Crete. There we go. I'll get it all right here eventually. Um, but uh, some strong teams at the top of that uh, C10 C bracket as well on the girls' side. Yeah, you right? Uh, as the two, you can make play a close game. I think it's another good job. I believe Bison will have an interesting center. Tokyo University will Tuesday. He got voice on Carol's on Tuesday. So my finals on games on Saturday. So the three fun nights there uh, that they'll have at, at Northwest. And I think we'll try to be there for as many of those as we can too, Eric. Right? Uh, we will. We, we kind of, you were kind of jarbled there, but uh, we'll kind of, kind of get through that. Tony was mentioning that. Yes. Uh, we're going to be there uh, at Northwest for some Thursday and some Saturday games. Uh, for that, uh, that we will be streaming those through the Northwest Strive channel. And that information is available at the top of the uh, Central 10 uh, Conference Basketball post that we've got on strivesports.com and the link right to the uh, Northwest Strive channel. That's where we'll have all of those games. Uh, on the guys' side, boy, I uh, saw Crete uh, open their new gym this past Saturday uh, with a big win over Norris. They come in as the two seed. You've got the York guys who are a scrappy bunch, and when they get hot, well, they've got some young, uh, really solid talent that's young. They've got some experienced seniors. Uh, it's kind of a matter of making sure everyone's on the same page on the same night, but boy, when York puts it together, they can really, uh, they could be dangerous. And Aurora's the number one seed, and we're going to talk a little bit more later on this week in the locker room uh, with their head coach and also with Austin Allen. We've got that uh, interview uh, scheduled for tomorrow, so that'll be a, a later post this week. But uh, excited to see what the uh, Central 10 looks like. Um, uh, Tony, maybe, it, maybe it's just me, but I'm especially intrigued on that guy side. Um, you got Aurora and Crete on the opposite sides and uh, a couple of solid teams that uh, we could be looking at there. Yeah, I think York and Crete in a semifinal match would be uh, an interesting game. You know, York kind of kind of put it to them there, uh, what was it, about 10 days ago. Uh, but you get a game maybe at a neutral site, that might change things a little bit for Crete. And, and York's so young. Again, the freshman Brady Danielson, a uh, nice player. I know they play Coach Snodgrass' his son Garrett Snodgrass, but they've got good seniors too. Uh, J.J. Schultz uh, kind, of, kind of leaves them. And then the junior John Irwin is a good scorer uh, for the Dukes. And uh, Crete is kind of a team that's kind of the same way. They've got a, a couple seniors and some sophomores, and so they mix in some young talent with some seniors senior leadership and you know you never know in a deal like this too if northwest can get past fairbury uh on tuesday night uh maybe the home crowd gives them a little spark against aurora in the semifinal game uh, you get that game on your home home floor and it might be worth a few points so that could be an interesting semifinal if that one were to play out as well and again, we'll have uh, we'll have some streaming coverage for you on that we will be doing on Thursday and on Saturday. But I believe the Northwest Strive crew is uh, is going to be doing some work throughout the week. So uh, we would definitely encourage you to uh, keep on top of things with the uh, uh, with the post on Strive Sports that we've got uh, as far as what uh, what. All games will be broadcasted, uh, get as many of those done, and we certainly thank the uh, Northwest Strive crew for uh, stepping up and, uh, and doing a lot of that for us, uh, so that'll be fun. Uh, Tony, uh, hey, we've gone uh, past 8 o'clock here, so let's get to our Strive 5 because there are some really, really good games uh, with some really good ranked teams before we get to the conference stuff. Uh, so let's start with a game tomorrow in Class D2. You've got on the boys' side, number 10, Juanita Palisade at number 7, Paxton. 
Um, I always think of Ollie's Big Game Bar uh, there at, <laughs> in, in Paxton. Every time I see that, that name, I, that's my first thought. But uh, some quality basketball out there as well. I always think of the great scorer from about from my day, Lindley Thompson, who was about a 2,300-point guy, fantastic. And he played for Jody Rhodes, who's still the coach. He does a great job there uh, for Paxton. You know, a lot of people, say you don't get to see much basketball out in western Nebraska. Well, here's your chance, right? So you can watch Juanita Palisade, who's 10th, and they've got kind of a nice basketball tradition out there. A few years, a few years back, they made it to the uh, state finals and were beat by Giltner, I believe. And, and Paxton, again, has always been really good. So this one will be, this one will be fun and sit on my laptop and, and watch this one tomorrow night. I think it'll be a good one in Paxton uh, for Juanita Palisade and the Tigers. And then a good one in the uh, C2 and C1 ranks. You've got Freeman at 12-4 and four at Wilbur Claytonia, uh, who is 9-4, and four, and uh, some good athletes on both sides, Tony. This one is, uh, is going to be an, a fun one to watch, I think. This is also tomorrow night. Yeah, I think this is one too. You know, where two teams are trying to get a little mojo back. Uh, they were both they've both been ranked at times this year, and they both just have fallen out of the rankings recently. So this might be a game that can get it, either one of these teams some late season momentum uh, on either side. So Wilbur Claytoni at home will host this one. Uh, Freeman in the in the midst of a tough uh, stretch of about four or five games on the road. Up on Friday, we go to Class A, where you could see the number seven Millard North girls. They are nine and three. At Class A number one, coming off a loss though, that is Millard West. They're now eleven and one. Yeah, the Wildcats uh, lost to uh, I believe it was Bellevue West uh, last weekend, and so coming off that loss, but still ranked uh, number one based on on previous wins and their strong win in the Metro Conference tournament. So Millard North is seventh in Class A. They're not ranked in the All Class Top Ten, but seventh in Class A, and and you know a little backyard rivals. So I think this will, this should be a pretty good one on the Millard West Stripe Channel. In Class C2, again on Friday, uh, the C2 and C1 matchup. In C2, number six, Elmwood Murdoch is 13-2. and two, And in Class C1, the Milford boys are number four at 12-1. and one. And Milford being 12-1 and one and uh, ranked in the top ten is, uh, is the Milford I remember from my high school days. Yeah, and it's been a while since they since they've been uh, uh, been that consistent all the way up to number four. They were unranked to start the year, playing really well at twelve and one. And Elwood Murdoch strung together a lot of wins. A new school for us. I'm kind of excited to watch this one. The Knights are thirteen and two. Uh, they beat a lot of ranked teams. Played a really tough schedule. So another test for them. Uh, they've had a few good recent road wins. They know they won at Fall City last week. So uh, another good test uh, for Elwood Murdoch. It should be a fun one uh, tomorrow night. That one's in Milford. And then also uh, another game that we kind of alluded to a little bit with Riley Tegmeyer, of course, uh, the guys will be playing after, but the girls game before Riley and his buddies take the floor is the uh, D1 at number nine BDS girls at the number four ranked team in class D2 Exeter Milligan. BDS girls are 10 and four. Exeter Milligan girls are 10 and three. Uh, fun stuff. And then, of course, you get to see Riley and the, uh, and the guys and the Timberwolves after that one as well. So uh, maybe even a, a double shot in this one, Tone. Yeah, double header. You'll probably maybe multiple screens open on Friday night, Eric. So uh, this one, uh, you know, a, a preview maybe of a Crossroads Conference final. They're the top two seeds in that tournament. So uh, this should be a really good one and a good way to kind of kick Crossroads Conference tournament week off. You get you get a good uh, a good game here. And these guys really backyard rivals. I'm sure the Nebraska signal will be there in full force, uh, having pictures of that one as well. Swami will be out <laughs> in force, I'm sure. Uh, and then on Saturday. Saturday, a great one up in uh, the northeast part of the state. In Class D1, the number 10 team is on the girls' side, the Pender girls, who at 9-6 and six have played a really tough schedule, and they are at D1 number one Howells Dodge, who is 11-3. Well, yeah, you, well, yeah. You look at uh, you look at Howell's Dodge at eleven and three. I think all of their losses uh, are to teams uh, in classes above them. And I believe if you look at Pender, it's the same thing. I'm pulling up schedules right now, uh, but Pender nine and seven, uh, and all of their losses are to Class C schools, uh, except uh, they had a holiday tournament loss to Emerson Hubbard, who's ranked second uh, in Class D one. So they just lost an eight point game to West Point Beamer the other night. That was a big game on Strive. They'll play with. 
Prisoner Pilger and host them. So that'll be on their channel on Friday, uh, excuse me, tomorrow night. Uh, and then at Howell's Dodge. So just a, a brutal stretch. Then they'll play Emerson Hubbard again. I mean, it's really a tough stretch uh, for Pender. Uh, they've played just, a, like I said, a, a brutal schedule. This one uh, against Howell's Dodge. Howell's Dodge was a semifinalist last year uh, in Class D1. Most of that team back, they lost to Dundee County Stratton in the semifinals, uh, but have held on to that number one ranking here uh, for most of the season. So a big test that kind of we'll see where those Northeast Nebraska schools stack up uh, in Class D1. So uh, the fact is multiple screens coming, especially on Friday. We've got three of them in the Strive 5 on Friday, two of them tomorrow night even. So, And then, oh, by the way, uh, conference basketball really kicks into gear. And I know there's plenty of conferences going on right now. Uh, the two that we're going to focus on, uh, obviously, CRC and the Central 10 conferences next week. Uh, again, a little reminder that we will be streaming all day on Friday at the Central at the uh, Crossroads Conference Tournament there at the York City Auditorium. Uh, the third place girls and boys and then the championship for the girls and the boys on Friday. And then for the Central 10 Conference, uh, I should, I should, I, when I say we, I should say it's going to be like me doing play-by-play, -play, but Northwest Strive is going to have at least a video and scoreboard coverage of a lot of, I don't want to say all, but a lot of the games that are be, being contested at Northwest uh, between Thursday and Friday, and then, of course, Saturday. Saturday, I will be in the main gym pretty much all day with the with play-by-play -play coverage, and uh, we'll have some fun stuff going on there. So uh, looking forward to that. And again, uh, check out our posts uh, elsewhere on strivesports.com. Uh, don't forget that on strivesports.com slash subscribe, you can get the dish served directly to your inbox. There it is, strivesports.com slash subscribe. Quick uh, name and email, and you get that served up to you uh, right now three, ta three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, you get our content served right at you, uh, direct links to where you're going for the night, and then, of course, uh, with uh, other links to uh, newspaper articles from across the state. Uh, we do all the, uh, all the cooking for you. All you got to do is uh, sit back and enjoy. I like yeah, that. That's the, ser the serving up. Yeah. But well, yeah, that's, that's the what we're dish. doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's been remember, fun to put remember, together too, guys. I think that's been, you know, a really neat thing. You can kind of get everything, like you said, right to your to your inbox. If you don't want to search the the World Herald or the the Journal Star, or you want to get something from out west, we've linked some North Platte Telegraph articles, some Scotts Bluff Star Herald articles. So uh, it's been really neat to put together and kind of bring the whole state together into one spot. Norfolk Daily News, Beatrice Sun have all been in there at least uh, a couple different times. Nebraska HS Hoops. Yep. Uh, we've had go. Mike stuff in there. So uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun to put that together. And, and uh, we've had a, a really nice response on, on our mailing list. So uh, strivesports.com slash subscribe. Uh, Taylor, Tony, anything else as we uh, – I think we're ready to get out of here. I think so, too. I'd like to say thank you to everybody who uh, read our article or our story on John Miller in Southern Valley yesterday. We had a tremendous response to that. And Coach Miller is one of the classics, man. He's uh, uh, as good as they come in the state of Nebraska uh, for coaching basketball. And, and he's impacted a ton of lives uh, in 35 years. That was a fun one. It was an honor to talk to him and to write that story. Yes, and it's uh, it has. It's been very well received. So thanks to, to all. And uh, um, by the way, you might you might do a quick search uh, in Strive Sports for Tony Chapman, and uh, you can find some of those other articles and uh, give him an extra read because there's some there's some good stuff in there. Tone, you do a nice job with those, and uh, it's very much appreciated. Uh, I think with that we can uh, we can say uh, farewell for this Wednesday night. Prep Auto Live on StriveSports.com. We will get you again next week. Have a good night, everyone. Yeah, I get it. For the little things. Technology's great. It makes things easier. It's faster. We can get things done wherever we go. And we get all that from our bank. It works for us. But for the bigger things, the things that really count, I still want to talk to the people I know and trust. That's why I'm here. cooked favorites and online ordering so you can skip the line that's what you'll find at dickie's barbecue in york log on to dickies.com select the york address sign in or create a profile and you'll be ordering delicious barbecue in just seconds choose from a variety of meats like brisket pulled pork chicken breast or sausage add a homestyle side like waffle iron fries fried onion tanglers 
barbecue beans, and even fried okra. You won't go away hungry. Try Dickie's Barbecue today and log on to Dickie's.com. Kids eat free on Sundays. I never really imagined that I would be a diesel technician. I started out in a whole different other field and then kind of worked my way and stumbled my way into it. And I enjoy every day of it. The people that I work with are great. Even if you're having a bad day, you know, they find some way to try to make you laugh or smile to try to brighten your day up. It can be a life-changing opportunity. So there's a lot of good uh, things that this company has to offer. Seedsmanship is what truly sets Channel Seed apart from other seed brands. It's our unmatched ability to provide you with the expert advice and customized service that helps you get the most yield out of your acres. It's the added value of year-round service combined with elite seed products that you only get from Channel Seed. At Channel, we know the importance of staying connected. As seed experts, we look to get the most out of your fields by putting ourselves in them throughout the season. That's seedsmanship at work.